Forget fancy footwork and tactical brilliance. Football's most captivating moments can sometimes be found in the raw, unfiltered fury of a manager-player public brawl. These on-field eruptions expose the simmering tensions beneath the surface, where egos clash, frustrations boil over, and respect gets tossed out with the nearest water bottle. Imagine Mourinho's icy stare meeting a player's defiant glare. Picture Guardiola's animated frustration countered by a player's dismissive shrug. We've all witnessed these on-pitch power struggles, leaving us wondering what ignites these volcanic displays. Was it a tactical disagreement, a missed penalty that sparked a shouting match, or a substitution so controversial it had teammates shaking their heads? Imagine the scene. Wembley Stadium, League Cup final on the line, and Chelsea are locked in a scoreless draw with Manchester City. Extra time is ticking down, the tension is thicker than pea soup in December, and then BAM! Cameras catch Sarri trying to sub out Kepa, their world record goalkeeper for Willy Caballero. Kepa, looking like a man possessed, or maybe just really attached to his goal, refuses to come off. Sarri is fuming on the sideline, the assistant manager throwing his hands up in despair, and poor Willy Caballero's left warming up like a forgotten pizza in the oven. It's pure, unadulterated football chaos. According to Kepa, it was all a big misunderstanding, to signal he was okay, not injured, but the communication breakdown on the pitch was epic. Sarri, on the other hand, wasn't buying it. This public defiance sent shockwaves through the football world. I'm surprised he didn't come on and, and force him to come off. Diego Simeone would have run directly onto the field and he would have physically dragged Kepa off the field. Is that out of order? Yeah, I'm sorry. Definitely. Kepa cost us the game. He didn't need it yet. So it was a big uh, misunderstanding. Chelsea ended up losing the penalty shootout and Kepa got a hefty dose of criticism and a one-match suspension for his on-field antics. Looking back, it was a defining moment for Sarri's short reign at Chelsea, highlighting the sometimes fraught relationship between managers and players. Roberto has also said in a press conference that you will never play for him again. Are you finished at this club for refusing to play? This clash was during a crucial Champions League match between Manchester City and Bayern Munich, where the citizens were 2-0 down. Manager Roberto Mancini decided to bring on star striker Carlos Tevez. Tevez, known for his passionate but sometimes volatile personality, publicly refused to come off the bench and onto the pitch. While the on-field incident sparked the drama, there were likely underlying tensions between Tevez and Mancini. Rumors suggested disagreements over tactics, training methods, and Tevez's overall commitment to the team. Tevez's actions cast a shadow over the match and significantly strained his relationship with Mancini. He got suspended, investigated, fined, and eventually left for a holiday in Argentina without the club's permission. He apologized and came back, but relationships were forever strained. Mancini features for a second time in this list in his spell at Manchester City. And now we're wondering how this dysfunctional team won the Premier League. Unlike the other ones mentioned, this took place in a training session rather than a match, but it was pictured, so it counts. The infamous clash between Mancini and Balotelli unfolded during a training session at Manchester City's training ground in 2013. The exact trigger for the confrontation remains unclear. Some reports suggest Balotelli tackled his teammate Gail Clichy rather roughly, while others claim it was a more general frustration with his performance. Regardless of these specific incidents, Mancini, known for his demanding personality, reached his boiling point with Balotelli's behavior. This was likely the culmination of ongoing tension over Balotelli's inconsistency and off-field antics. Mancini confronted Balotelli on the pitch, and things escalated quickly. Reports of shouting, shoving, and jersey grabbing painted a picture of a heated and public disagreement. Thankfully, the coaching staff intervened before the situation got completely out of hand. Balotelli, undoubtedly frustrated, left the training ground early. This incident became a major talking point, raising questions about the manager-player dynamic and Balotelli's future at the club. Following their title win, Mario was transfer listed and booted out of the club. Manchester United's 2018 encounter with Tottenham at Wembley Stadium wasn't just a Premier League clash, it was a boiling pot of tension ready to overflow. And overflow it did, thanks to the on field spat between Paul Pogba and Jose Mourinho. United were struggling under Mourinho's defensive tactics. Pogba, a player known for his attacking flair, was visibly frustrated on the pitch. The tension between him and Mourinho was an open secret, a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. 
as the players walked off the pitch towards the tunnel during halftime. Mourinho was caught on camera having a heated discussion with Pogba. While the exact words remain a mystery, Pogba's body language spoke volumes. Arms crossed, a dismissive shrug, and a facial expression that could curdle milk. The second half wasn't much better for United. They eventually lost the match 2-0, adding salt to the wounds of the on-field spat. Pundits dissected the incident, fans debated on social media, and the pogba Mourinho feud became the headline story. Mourinho called Pogba a virus, and the pair beefed until Mourinho's eventual sacking at the end of that year. The tension between Cristiano Ronaldo and Eric Ten Hag reached a fever pitch during Manchester United's Premier League clash against Tottenham Hotspur in October 2022. This wasn't just a disagreement on tactics, it was a public display of defiance. United were leading 2-0 by the second half in a game that Cristiano managed to score a hat-trick in last year in a heated clash that ended 3-2. So, we don't even need to tell you what was going through the Portuguese legend's head. Cameras caught him gesturing and muttering to himself. His body language was a clear indicator of his displeasure. And to put more gas on the fire, Ten Hag asked CR7 to start warming up around the 88th minute. That was the last straw for the GOAT. He felt disrespected, and you can see him drowning in his own thoughts minutes before storming off the pitch, and even before the final whistle was blown. That incident literally broke the internet, as it was the climax of a very long clash of egos between the Dutch tactician and the Man United legend. This wasn't a slow walk of disappointment, it was a full-on tantrum, a public display of disrespect for the manager's decision, and the complete disregard for his teammates still battling on the pitch. Ronaldo's actions were met with a mixture of anger and disbelief. Some pundits slammed his behavior as unprofessional and disrespectful, and others like club legend Roy Keane showed him support, claiming that since his return to Old Trafford, he was shown nothing but disrespect. He later gave an interview with Piers Morgan, where he denounced Eric Ten Hag and the club before having his contract terminated in December. Two years after the incident, we would be really interested to know your thoughts. Are you Team Ten Hag or Team CR7? Let us know in the comments. The most recent being Mo Salah and Jurgen Klopp, who clashed after the recent Liverpool game against West Ham United where they drew 2-2. Although Salah's not been as prolific as other seasons, he's still one of Liverpool's most important players this campaign, scoring 25 goals in 41 games, and should be a regular starter for Liverpool, especially as they're currently in a three-way title race with Manchester City and Arsenal. Instead, Salah didn't start but came on in the 79th minute. As he prepared to enter the pitch, Salah picked a fence with something Klopp said, and they argued till Nunez ended the altercation. Liverpool are now strongly considered out of the title race following the draw. Pundits described this as a clash of egos. Klopp said it was done for him, and Salah said there'll be fire if he speaks. As Klopp departs this summer, and Salah's future remains uncertain, both men could have just said their goodbyes to each other. For this one, we're going outside the pitch to an incident that isn't as related to football. The Ferrari incident is a legend at this point, but it's interesting regardless. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, known for his outspoken personality and flamboyant lifestyle, arrived at Barcelona with a reputation as a superstar striker. Pep Guardiola, meanwhile, was a rising managerial star, renowned for his meticulous tactical approach and focus on collective play. Amounts of these specific details vary, but here's the gist. Ibrahimovic rolled up to training in his flashy Ferrari after being told not to by Pep. This wasn't just any car. It symbolized his individual success and extravagant personality. Never one to shy away from a confrontation, Ibrahimovic reportedly fired back with a response like, I came here to play football, not follow dress codes. This clash highlighted the fundamental difference in their philosophies. This seemingly trivial incident became a public talking point, further fueling the narrative of a strained relationship. It foreshadowed the eventual breakdown between the two, culminating in Ibrahimovic's lone move to AC Milan just a few months later. Zlatan later addressed it and talked about how Guardiola was a coward with no balls. The tension between Ferguson and Beckham had been growing for a while. Beckham's celebrity status and perceived shift in focus away from the pitch reportedly irritated the disciplinarian manager. Manchester United had just lost a league match to Arsenal, a bitter rival. Beckham's performance, like that of the entire team, was lackluster. Fergie, known for his fiery temper, was already fuming about the loss. 
When he entered the locker room and saw a dejected-looking Beckham, his frustration boiled over. Some reports claim Beckham may have muttered a swear word or made a sarcastic remark, further enraging Ferguson. Others suggest he was simply stunned and silent. In a fit of rage, Ferguson lashed out. He aimed a kick at a pile of clothes on the floor, but unfortunately, a boot connected with Beckham above the eye. The force was enough to cause a cut and a bruise. Photos of Beckham's injury emerged, fueling a media frenzy. Within the locker room, a tense silence descended. Reports suggest some players intervened to prevent further escalation. While the public fallout was significant, both Ferguson and Beckham downplayed the incident in the immediate aftermath. However, it undoubtedly strained their relationship. The decision to sell Beckham to Real Madrid later that year was seen by many because of this fractured bond. Old Man Fergie features again in this video, and this time it was towards his former captain. By 2002, Keane was battling persistent injuries and a perceived decline in Manchester United standards. His frustration with certain teammates was no secret within the locker room. However, instead of addressing these issues internally, Keane made a critical error in judgment. Roy was invited to participate in a routine interview on MUTV to discuss United's recent results. However, instead of offering a neutral analysis, he used the platform to launch a scathing attack on some of his teammates. He criticized their lack of commitment, fitness, and hunger, leaving no room for ambiguity. Sir Alex Ferguson, known for controlling the club's image, was furious. He viewed Keane's outburst as a massive betrayal of trust and a public humiliation of the team. He felt Roy had undermined his authority and created unnecessary division within the squad. Ferguson responded swiftly. He fined Keane a significant amount, the highest ever levied on a United player at the time. But more importantly, he stripped Keane of the captain's armband. It's only fitting to end with the only international mention on this list, but one that was so destructive to the player and team. France's 2010 World Cup campaign in South Africa wasn't going according to plan. Their opening match was a disappointing draw against Uruguay, and tensions were already brewing between Dominic, known for his rigid tactics and authoritarian style, and some players, including Anelka, who preferred a more expressive approach. Following a lackluster first half in their second game against Mexico, Dominic decided to make changes, substituting Anelka, who'd been largely invisible on the pitch. According to French newspaper Lecky, a heated exchange ensued in the locker room, with Dominic allegedly using strong language and Anelka responding in kind. Both Anelka and Dominic denied the exact wording of the reported exchange. Anelka claimed he was frustrated with the lack of service and felt unfairly singled out by Dominic's criticism. He admitted to a heated discussion but denied using any offensive language. Regardless of the precise words used, the situation escalated. Anelka was sent home from the World Cup and the French camp descended into chaos. Players staged a training ground protest in support of Anelka, further damaging team spirit and morale. France's World Cup campaign ended in a dismal group stage exit. And that wraps up this video. Don't forget to sucker punch that subscribe button, kick a boot into the notification bell, and slam that like button so you don't miss a video from this channel.